Hi, welcome to Caregiver Circle. You know, we sponsored this at Kids Play because we believe the work you do as caregivers is so important. And we wanna say thank you. And we also believe uh, in connections. That's what Kids Play is all about. So if you get to listen to this after the time it's, it's run or uh, if you want to drop in at any time, please feel free. There's a link on our, our website and we'd love for you to join us. Um, my friend Bethany is here and she and I are going to talk a little bit about heroes and what we have just, um, we're, we're, we're exploring um, this wonderful quote from Mr. Rogers. And it's about when times are scary and we certainly are in a scary time. We've never had a worldwide pandemic quite like this. We've never had so much stay home time and yet we're doing it to take good care of each other. So the quote that we're working with at the museum, I'm gonna read it from my little Mr. Rogers book, is when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. To this day, he writes, especially in times of disaster, I remember my mother's words and I'm always comforted by realizing that there are still so many helpers, so many caring people in this world. Now, at Caregivers, we always talk not just about helping, but we celebrate the help that you give your children. We know there's a lot of joy in that, so we like to talk about the joy. We know there is a lot of challenge in that, uh, especially now, 24 seven, being home and sheltering in place for some of us. And we know that um, we need to take care of ourselves, but we're looking at helpers everywhere. You know, as we spotlight exhibits in the museum, we found helpers in the diner. This week, we're featuring the fire truck and the firefighters and the EMTs. And next week, we're gonna take a look at, well, we featured the grocery store. Next week, we're gonna take a look at the diner. Those people have their own joys and they have to take good care of themselves because we're very dependent on them right now. And they have a lot of challenges especially the hospital workers and people who are being exposed every day. So we're gonna talk about finding heroes. And the reason we're talking about it, besides that there are heroes just about everywhere you look right now, people trying to help each other, is because how important finding a hero is for a child. Now we've highlighted some resources under our caregiver uh, resource and one of them is this wonderful um, article called Five Tips for Teaching Your Children What a Real Hero Is. And stressing that they're not always wearing capes, they're not throwing spider webs out of their hands, that real heroes, um, they talk about the qualities you should help children look for in a real hero. And they suggest in this article that you start by asking a child what they admire in people. In a little bit, Bethany and I are gonna talk about our heroes, and we're gonna try and start with that, what qualities we admire in people. But then there's this beautiful quote by um, Jeffrey Canada, and he's a man who works with youth in inner cities. And he, out of his work with Harlem's Children's Zone, he has not any kind of bashfulness about saying, I want to be a children's hero. Children need heroes because heroes give hope. And without hope, they have no future. So much like Mr. Rogers' mother reassuring him that there's always people to help, much like your child when they look around your home and they see you and hopefully daddy and other people who are significant in the home trying to help, he says that this is a very important key to children and their future. Now, I'm just gonna quote Mr. Rogers one more time, but I'm gonna save that one for the end. I want you to stop a minute and, oh, oh I'm gonna tell you about one more resource. It's called, you can Google it yourself. It's called Five Tips for Teaching Children What a Real Hero Looks Like. And there's an amazing picture of a soldier in a wheelchair with his son on his lap. So again, real heroes don't have to be flying around through the air and climbing up buildings. And if you know any of those, be sure and call in and let us know about them. So 
as we talk about heroes, saving that one quote from Mr. Rogers, let's just stop for a minute and think about someone in your life who you would call a hero. And I'm just going to be quiet for a minute so you can think about this in terms of what they have done for your life. Because after all, Jeffrey Canada said, when we have heroes, we are giving children hope. So let's just think about one person. Now, what qualities does that person have without mentioning the person's name or what they've done to be heroic? Let's just think about the qualities they have. Bethany, can you mention one of your hero's qualities? And we'll just kind of go back and forth. We'll see if we can come up with four or five, each of us. Sure. Um, the first one that comes to mind is my hero is always kind. Um, the first that comes to my mind because it's a barometer that I use for every friend I have is that my hero has a sense of humor doesn't take herself too seriously mm -hmm. something yeah. else Bethany yeah um, that she's always calm she never overreacts or um, gets too frantic and hectic situations that might come across. She's always your go-to calm kind of person. <laughs> well, similar to that, my hero never sees the glass half empty. She uh, has had significant loss in her family. She's lost over four major family members to cancer. And she always can see the glass half full. And she has a way of pulling out the good in every situation. So it's kind of a special calm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of piggybacking off of that, um, the ability to be realistic, knowing that not everything is rainbows and butterflies, but being able to to take that in stride and know how to um, to deal with the bad parts of things um, and to be able to to navigate those those waves of good and bad because um, you're gonna run into them. And, and same thing, this person's had a lot of tragic things in her life and just being able to, to ride the ups and downs with grace. I think too, you know, that goes along with being authentic. So when I say that my hero sees the glass half full, it's never a phony thing. She has really found something authentic and that she, and it's usually something she can do. Um, and it, it may not be a big thing. Um, so being authentic, yeah, because running around like a Pollyanna with a giant smile telling everyone to be happy, to me is not so inspiring. But that's not what my hero does. No. Anything um, else to say about yours? Yeah, the fact that she unapologetically takes time for herself. Her biggest quote that I will always remember is you have to take care of the caretaker and she will have no problem saying, I would love to do this for you, but I have to refuel myself right now so I can help you better. And I think that's a super important thing, which is what caregivers is all about is how you take care of yourself. And she will let you know that she needs that time so she can be her best self to help other people. I don't know what quality that is, but I love it. <laughs> Uh, I think that's so important. I think probably maybe self-awareness because, yeah. you know, on the airplane, they tell you to put the oxygen tank on or the mask on yourself first and then take mm -hmm. your children. I think that there's a wisdom in that. And um, I know my hero is always telling me to be careful about overworking and over worrying and et cetera, et cetera. And so I know deep down she's taking good care of herself. Um, the other thing though, I'd like to mention is courage. I mean, mm -hmm. Now, my, my heroes don't wear capes and they don't fly around and they don't throw webs, but the courage in this person that I'm thinking of, it's just rock solid. And she's had to, to uh, face some tough times Did it with a lot of courage and grace. How about your hero? Does that fit? Oh, absolutely. Um, 
I mean, I'm sure there was lots of sleepless nights that she spent worrying and wondering and making lists and, and trying to navigate her way through things, but just having the courage to never back down. There were so many times when hiding in a little hole of, of herself was probably an option that a lot of people take, but um, just, yeah, you're right. That courage of just being able to stand up and doing what she can do um, was definitely something that she has, yeah. You're muted, Patty. I you enter? Hit my phone for me, I apologize for that in the background. Um, I did want to talk about what our heroes are doing right now. Now, I'm going to ask, um, your hero is still alive, right, Bethany? Yes. Okay. yes. My, my hero, I have a lot of heroes that aren't alive, like Martin Luther King Jr., you know, people who are big. But my hero uh, lives down in the next town. And she has a name. Her name is Barbara. I'm not going to tell you anymore because she'd be embarrassed. But I'm thinking about what she's doing right now that... Uh, has made me underline that, yeah, this person is my hero. How about you? Is, you? is your person doing things right now that you could? Absolutely. So um, she'd be embarrassed as well, but I'm going to do it. It's my best friend, my mother. <laughs> um, and she is, she's doing everything. I don't want to say right, but she's doing everything right. She um, is taking care of my father who is not in the best of health. Um, they have, followed every guideline possible as far as she told me yesterday, they haven't left the house in 38 days. Um, she gets all her food delivered, but having the, the wherewithal and the, the resources to be able to make sure that that happens. Um, it takes a lot of research. We all know that this is not an easy time. And they are very social people that like to go out and visit <laughs> stores and visit people and you know do lots of things. So it's a huge adjustment in their lifestyle. They're both newly retired and love going out in the world. Um, but they're planting new gardens in their backyard and they are mom's painting again. And she crochets these fabulous Barbie dolls that Patty has seen. Um, <laughs> they are fabulous. <laughs> and so they're just focusing on things that they can do. And she is, um, she sends me pictures all the time of her new, her new fun projects. And she doesn't push herself, I think is the biggest thing. If she doesn't get something accomplished that day, that's okay. She's being very kind to herself, which is something I truly admire and something that I try to emulate as much as possible. Um, but you don't have to be, um, overly aggressive with yourself, I guess, as far as, as your productivity levels and your energy levels, but just do what you can do and don't worry about the rest. That's wonderful. I always feel like I know your mom when you talk about her. Um, my friend, I'll give you an example. I called her one day. I had some hilarious YouTubes I was watching. I'd wasted so much time laughing <laughs> to and um, it came out in the course of the conversation. She, she just kind of leaked this, that while I was watching YouTube and wasting probably about two hours, she was sewing masks and, taking, and planning on taking them to a hospital, which she has since done. Um, and this is not something she bragged about. It was just something I almost had to kind of extract it from her. <laughs> what are you sewing? And what are you delivering? And where are you taking them? And she still is at that work. And she supplied actually my whole family and many other families in her town with masks, in addition to sending them to hospitals. And then it occurred to her that no one was making graduation signs this year because there's a lot of downplay of graduation. They're doing it in different ways. So she contacted the company that usually made those signs and she ordered 60 beautiful thank you signs that could in people's yards and she asked people if they would like to donate money. She's taking that money that people gladly donated and she's giving it to restaurants who are taking food into the hospital workers that are working at the hospital. And again, it's, it took a little research to find out all the pieces of that because she wasn't bragging about it. She was just doing it. She was surprised herself that she ran out of the, the first 60 signs and now has reordered 100 more and still has people. They stop by her yard, they leave a donation, 
and they take the thank you signs home. So um, being kind of a showy person and talking a lot, I really admire her quiet side. The way she is a helper, she just helps and she makes problems a size to what she can do. And she does a lot, a lot behind the scenes. So when we look, you know, I don't know how you feel, Bethany, but when we look for the helpers, it's, it's certainly easy to find them in our lives if we really think about it. And then you can apply that to the people you meet from the fire stations, the police stations, the emergency vehicle, vehicles, the grocery stores. Um, those people are, are doing a mega thing and they are the new heroes. It's kind of exciting to see. And the hospital workers, oh my goodness, let's all go out at seven o'clock and applaud them. So how do you feel about that, Bethany? Oh, absolutely. It is such a, an interesting shift in our time period to see what a helper looks like, what you know, virtual cape they're wearing right now. Um, and I absolutely agree that there are, there's almost two different types of heroes. There's the, you know, the, the obvious ones that we think of, like you said, the firefighters, but then there's your friend who just quietly behind the scenes just kind of sneaks in there and, and does her thing. And it's so important to be able to recognize and applaud and appreciate both sets um, because they're both equally as important and equally as, as magical as Mr. Rogers said is those helpers that um, that get us through times like this when others are struggling and, and don't know what to do. They're the people that we can just kind of lean on and be like, okay, you almost just feel better being around them. Even if it's just a phone call, you're just like, okay, I can breathe now. I know I feel that way every time I talk to my mom. It's just like, okay, I'm all right. <laughs> right. Right. I have no clue what would happen to me if I ever called my hero and she was falling apart because uh, mm -hmm. her falling apart is even inspiring when you hear her because it comes with laughter or a plan on how she's going to look at it differently. But, um, you know, there's some challenges right now. She's backloaded on elastic. Her mask production is waiting on elastic orders. How about your, uh, you mentioned your dad, and that's one of your mom's challenges. Is, is there another challenge you're seeing that she wrestles with? Um, I think not being technically savvy and being a social person, just mm -hmm. that social isolation. I mean, she does have dad, um, but they've had each other for 45 years. <laughs> so <laughs> they're not sick of each other yet, but um, but it's just keeping, keeping in touch with people. Um, not everyone does phone calls like they used to. They use a lot of like we're doing now with the video calls and things like that. So I think it's her challenge of um, just remaining social and, you know, um, doing what she can. I know that she put a thank you, a big thank you sign above her, her mailbox at her house for all the postal carriers. Mm -hmm. She sent me a picture of it. She like made this big scrapbook page and put <laughs> it out there. It says thank you to all the postal workers. And she's put, um, she doesn't have any stuffed bears, but she has stuffed cats. You can tell where I get my love of cats. <laughs> and she put them in her windows for people because she lives in a cute little neighborhood with a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so those challenges of just how to stay social and to be able to still interact with people because it's so easy to just kind of sink into that, that depression almost of, of not being able to talk to others the way we're used to. Um, but she seems to be doing an okay job. And whenever she's not, she always ends up calling me a lot, which I'm okay with. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And the, the thing about the cats, I mean, we talk about challenges. I mean, one of the things they're thinking about now is when this is over, in a long time from now, how we're going to need to take care of the house, the hospital workers, the medical people, take care of the grocers, and these people who are going to be kind of exhausted. But it also sounds like, um, like my friend, she's found a lot of joy. I mean, putting a stuffed cat in her window, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. you can find the joy in it. So, as we look at heroes, I do want to end with uh, Mr. Rogers' quote. And we would really, if you'd like to, I love talking to Bethany, you could probably talk to her for another hour. But if you would like to share your own personal hero in light of the people that we're celebrating out 
please contact uh, Kids Play. And what would they do? They would send that to Memories, Bethany, or? Yeah, they can, they can absolutely reach out to memories at kidsplaymuseum.org. Um, and we can set up, even if we want to set up another um, caregiver's time if we need to. But um, every Thursday at 930, we have this wonderful group that meets. Um, and, you know, we'd love to see more people help join us. Right, right. But you're also always welcome to, uh, I think this one will be recorded, I believe. So <laughs> it should be on our, our website. And uh, we do want to give you a heads up. We are getting ready to sponsor an evening for parents who are talking to their children about the pandemic. Um, we're planning it so that it can be um, hopefully after bedtime. This is for grownups. It will last no more than an hour. But we invite you to get in touch with Bethany at the museum and if you'd like to join us. And you'll see something on our website and on Facebook coming soon. So Mr. Rogers, you know, he's He's brilliant, and you know, I think I, he's one of my famous heroes. I've got the little book with all his sayings. I read one every day and repeat it the next day. But he also um, has this kind of wonderful picture of himself surrounded by children and books, which is one of my favorite things to do. But this is what he says about heroes again. We live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say, it's not my child, it's not my community, it's not my world, it's not my problem. Then there are those who see the need and respond. I consider those people my heroes, he says. And I guess that's Bethany and I've had the joy of talking about our own personal heroes and they've seen the need and they respond. And for the first time, uh, we were put in a situation where we're almost forced to, to notice and that's a great thing to do. So thanks for coming to Caregivers and stopping in. I hope you enjoyed the recording and I hope you give us your feedback. Okay, thanks and have a, have a beautiful day. Bye, bye Bethany.